now ready for our fourth module where we're going to talk about synchronization. So just to put this in context, remember way, way back when we were first started talking together, I gave you kind of this four bullet point summary of what's going on with OpenMP, how it's multi-threaded in a shared address space model, that you get in trouble when you have unintended sharing of data, which causes race conditions, that you deal with race conditions with synchronization constructs, and then later on you minimize synchronization with, by controlling your data environment. So, now we're ready to talk about synchronization. There are entire books written about synchronization, and when you start getting into the difficulty of making concurrent applications work, it's all about this topic of the different ways to synchronize threads. So it can get so complicated. Fortunately, though, in OpenMP, there isn't that much we have to deal with. In fact, at a real high level, we really just need to think about two flavors of synchronization. And I have these nice little pictures here that help you keep them straight. The first one is called barrier synchronization. And it just defines a point in the program and says, hey, all you threads, stop. Wait here until everyone arrives, then people can go on. That's a barrier. Right. The second family of synchronization constructs supports something called mutual exclusion. And the concept is simple, and, and, and you can see it in this little picture here. And then I define a set of code or updates of a variable, but I define something that I want to happen one at a time. Only one thread at a time can do that block of code. So it excludes everyone else. There's mutual exclusion, so only one at a time can go in there and do that. I'm going to show you how to do both of those in OpenMP. Now, the constructs involved are the critical construct, the atomic construct, and the barrier construct. Now, just because I like to give lots of foreshadowing so that you can be just chomping at the bit for what's coming later on, there's also this ordered construct, there's flush, and there's some low-level locks. We'll talk about those later. For right now, we're just going to stick to these really, really simple ones because I want you to get started and actually start working with and adding synchronization to your programs. So let's start with the simple ones. The easiest one to understand is the barrier. So as I said before, the barrier defines a point in the program and it says, all threads arrive here before any threads go on. So here I have a little piece of, it's very contrived, almost a silly little program, but it gives you a very simple way to see where a barrier could be used. So I have a parallel region, pragma OMP parallel, and then I'm going to have everyone pick up their ID. This is the SPMD pattern as we talked about, so very, very common. You want your ID and you're going to do something a little bit different based on that ID. So now I'm going to have a shared array called A, and I'm going to fill my element of array based on some big calculation. And it has to be big and messy, otherwise there'd be too much parallel overhead. So some big, messy calculation indexed by the ID. Now I'm going to later use that array A, so I have to make sure everybody's done before any of the threads go on to the next calculation. I put a barrier there. So pound, pragma, OMP, barrier inserts a barrier into your program, so I know when we get to the next statement where we calculate B, I know that nobody will get to the calculation of B until everybody's finished their piece of A. That's what the barrier does. Very simple to use, extremely powerful. Now, mutual exclusion, the easiest way to do that is with a critical construct. And so here's another example where we would use the critical construct. Remember, what critical does is it's mutual exclusion. It creates something called a critical section. And the critical section says that for this block of code, I'm only going to let one thread at a time execute this code. So if I'm moving along as a thread, moving along through the program, and I hit a critical section, and somebody else is already doing that computation, I will wait. And then when that somebody else is done, they will release the critical section and one of the threads waiting can start. So I guarantee that only one thread at a time is working on that critical section. So you can see in this piece of code, I have a, a for loop. And once again, it better be a big job because there's a lot of overhead. There's a lot of overhead in managing the critical sections. So I want to make sure I'm not hitting this every millisecond. You know, I want to hit it every 10 seconds, every 50 seconds. So a big calculation, and then I'm going to use it to consume it and combine it into a final result. 
And therefore, I want to make sure that that combined step is done only one thread at a time. So I'd put it inside of a critical section. And we do that with a pound pragma OMP critical. And now here I'm showing one statement, but it could be a structured block. So I could have pound pragma OMP critical, open curly brackets, close curly brackets, and then put whatever I want in between there. But just remember, only one thread at a time is doing that work in the critical section. So I kind of want to make sure that there's not a lot happening in that critical section. Otherwise, I'll serialize a critical part of my program, and that will kill my performance. So you tend to try and design your algorithms so you do some little wrap-up step in the critical section, so you're not spending a lot of time in there. Now, um, there's another construct called an atomic. Now, atomic, oh boy, well, you know what? There's so much I can say about atomic that I'm going to talk about it way later on near the end, when we get into some of the complex nuances of Atomic. So let's just keep it simple right now. There's a basic version of Atomic which you can think of as a shortcut to critical. Here's what it comes down to. There are certain constructs in hardware, supported in hardware, for doing just quick updates of values in memory. This is because some of the low-level things we do in operating systems and some of the low-level things we do in runtime systems need really, really efficient mutual exclusion. So what Atomic says is, if those hardware constructs are available, use them. Otherwise, it acts just like a critical section for a subset of operations. So that's what Atomic does. And it basically applies to a simple binary operation to update a value. So if I have a counter I want to increment, or I just want to you know, do a read, modify, write. So I'm going to read a value, update it with a value temporary, and then write it, which is what I have in this example. That's where you would use an atomic. So pound, pragma, OMP, atomic. When in doubt, use critical. It's more general. But uh, if you're doing just a simple update, one of the forms I show you in this box here in the, the graphic, if it's a you know, straight binary operation, an increment, a decrement, you can go ahead and use the atomic and, and it'll be a little bit faster. So those are the three major high-level synchronization constructs. And I'll tell you, most of us working with OpenMP, those are the ones we use again and again and again. So now I have an exercise for you. And this one will take you a little while. So I want you to give yourself the time you need to go through and do this. Make a copy of your Pi program, the, the one that you've created in parallel. And what I want you to do is I want you to modify it so that you don't have false sharing, so that you're going to update that value of sum without having to use that promote to an array so we can get rid of that false sharing, which means, of course, I'm going to have to use a synchronization construct. So figure out how you can use the synchronization construct I've shown you, which will be critical section in this case, to, get, to create a version of your Pi program that doesn't run into the false sharing problem. All right, so I'll, I'll see you in a little while when we talk about the results of this exercise, but for now, run off and do that exercise, and that finishes this module.